What up, Kings fans, and welcome back to On The King's Dime. Today, we've got part two of our defense video dropping for you. Uh, if you haven't seen part one on our bigs, uh, go back and watch that. That'll be in the description. I'll put a link down below, so make sure go and check that out before you watch this one. Uh, today, we're going to be looking at our perimeter defense. Uh, there's still a few issues. I started looking at some of the footage, sort of thinking... I just we'll have a look at what issues we've seen during this season. We started out great with a really good stretch and then a, a bit of a poor stretch sort of in the middle of the season. We won two games uh, there. We look pretty good. And then now we've come to this New Zealand game and recording this just after the New Zealand game. Some issues there. Bogut, the New Zealand game's a little bit weird. We didn't have Bogut. We had to change the rotations around a little bit, but there's definitely some uh, issues on the perimeter. So we're going to go through some of that here. We're going to be doing some offense videos as well coming up in the next couple of weeks. I think there's definitely some issues there. Uh, I'm not going to uh, not going to spoil it, <coughs> but uh, I want to sort of say like, share, and subscribe. Look down below are all the links. We're trying, still trying to get this back up on iTunes. Uh, we'll get that back on iTunes as soon as possible. It's a problem. With these videos, we can't link the YouTube to it because obviously you just get these videos in your iTunes or podcast attic feed. So we'll, we'll be bringing that very soon. But again, like, share and subscribe and we're just going to get straight into it. So the first thing we're going to look at is how our guys are getting hung up on screens a little bit. There's a few aspects of this. As you see, Deshaun Taylor sort of gets pinned down on that screen a little bit. Deshaun Taylor's not too bad moving his feet. He's quite quick, quite adept defensively. But the other thing here, as you can see off this inbounds play from Lamanus, again, another sketchy screen, but Sean Bruce is another guy that gets hung up on screens a little bit. Seems to happen to our sort of smaller guys, whereas you look at guys like Cooks and Dili Lozada as an, sort of another one there from Cooks not being able to get out there, but that's kind of well worked from Brisbane. Our smaller guys have a lot more trouble on screens, Casper, Sean Bruce, and Deshaun Taylor, but sort of Xavier Cooks, Tate, and Didi sort of have a lot more better ability and brad newley as well to actually avoid the screens which is you know something i want to see a little bit better fighting through screens the problem is so so much little contact like just that there is called it's a foul he was clearly outside the cylinder you know it's either a no call or maybe it's an offensive foul uh, but moving to the phoenix which is where you know it's it's perth mainly where we started noticing these issues off a setting high screens there's a little bit too much space between bogut and the guy handling the ball in there in pinot but have a look at this one screen brings up Mitch Creek. That's a second screen. And then look at this, a rescreen on the third screen. And that's a pretty pretty good shot for Robertson. He's been knocking those down a fair bit. Teams are going to do this a little bit more. And Perth especially is going to do that. There's a miscommunication on that switch between Casper Ware and Tate. Tate's pretty good at sort of switching and moving out to the perimeter. Um, I, I kind of like him as a main go-to defender on the bigger guys. But on these smaller guards, I don't know. We, we've got to basically have Casper Ware, Sean Bruce, or Deshaun. Maybe even Xavier Cooks sort of clamp guys up. Didi, Didi does quite well, but in the limited minutes he plays, he doesn't really get that many chances. Again, more high screens where we're not fighting through those screens. We're allowing guys to set screens and basically take open shots. Kyle Adnam's a guy you kind of want to get up into physically. He's had some problems with physical defenders as he shorts the pick and roll there. That's a pretty good finish from Mitch Creek. Again, we saw Kickett standing out there a little bit in no man's land. You know, you're not going to, again, a rescreen there. And that, uh, we're seeing guy, the offensive players go into defenders and get calls. And that's just a bad call, pretty much. You know, he, he's pretty solid there. He might be lent out. Like, he's established his position quite well. He's a big guy. Adnam getting a little bit of a superstar <laughs> bailout call there. Um, that's a problem too with Tate if he's getting called for these, you know, really rubbish fouls. That's that's taking his effectiveness away. But again, Dane Pano, decent screen. And Kyle Adnam, you know, that's the end of the end of the uh, quarter. But you, know, you you kind of want him taking that mid ranger. But you have a look at this. Look how high they're sitting on the logo, basically. And Robertson running downhill, knocking that down. The big not stepping up. But I, in these situations, I think it's the perimeter guy who is, you know not fighting through that screen he's getting hung up a little bit jt as you can see forces the, him to get rid of the ball fights around a little bit more and as you can see there's just you know another soft foul do we do we really need these fouls being called for absolutely nothing i kind of don't want to see that i don't want to talk we're gonna we'll probably talk about the um the new zealand game on the podcast in a couple of days time when we do it and that's that's pretty good defense there from deshaun taylor i feel like deshaun taylor moves his feet really well he's, he's quite solid Again, look how over over committing he is. That's a bit of a dodgy screen there, you know. And again, 
you know, if we fight through screens, we're kind of getting cool. So, so maybe we're seeing fighting through screens is a, you know, a staple. But again, we're getting some weird fouls. As that's that's not too bad defense there from Kicker on Creek. Uh, if he sort of leans over, then Creek's getting the superstar call. Creek's getting a lot of those foul calls. And again, you look at another ball screen there. Pretty sketchy one there. Casper does well to fight through it. Switches out onto Brad Newley. He goes past Brad Newley pretty well, and that's a pretty solid floater. Newley, I don't, I'm not sure. Like uh, In some situations, I like Newley on the perimeter. He's, he's quite solid. But at the same time, if, if a guy gets one step on Newley, I usually see him struggle to contain a guy downhill. And that's pretty pretty good defense from Casper there, taking the shot, going down. He does that quite well, pulls the chair out on offensive players. Um, but again, soft. But, you know, we've got to practice what we preach here. We don't like those soft calls if we're getting those on us. But then if they're happening on offense, on our defensive play, then, you know, we've got to, we've got to be uh, consistent. This is pretty solid from <laughs> for the crazy, crazy swat down from JT. Uh, again... This was the end of the quarter, so everyone was sort of in there trying to get that rebound. It's still looking at screening is where we're having these issues. Uh, teams, especially on that little, little try screen, we'll, we'll see them here again. I'm pretty sure they run this little three screen action again. Ty Wesley's pretty solid at setting the screen. Here comes Mitch Creek, and I believe Dane Pinot comes up and sets another one high. Exactly the same play. This was quite well defended. Boga comes all the way out, and that's... Look, I don't know if... If we go back to our defensive bigs video, I don't know if Bogut's able to really just step out and defend on the perimeter. That's why we're seeing JT and uh, Xavier Cooks play a little bit more, sort of those uh, solid minutes. Another another high screen again from Pano. Look at Brad Newley basically letting him shoot that three. I thought that was an interesting sort of wrinkle. He, I think I'm pretty sure they passed out and he finished that play. But again, another high screen, just straight downhill. He loves shooting that on the run, sort of flip three. Casper, I think, loves shooting that too. Spoiler alert, I'm not going to spoil the offensive video. We're not really seeing that. Then, you know, Xavier Cook sort of in, in a little bit closer to the rim, gets worked. He's just, his footwork's a little bit too slow. He, he's quite a solid defender. He's, he's very stout and very good at reading play. Uh, but if you get a half a step on Xavier Cooks or Brad Newley, then you're probably going to go to the rim. And again, JT. The problem with JT is if he's out on the perimeter, he, he's getting like bouncing into guys and then they're just getting calls for that and we, we don't want to see that we don't want JT basically having to fight through all these screens again uh, Ty Wesley went up to set that screen and again sketch, that's a sketchy one that's that's some pretty sketchy just running into this that's pretty well defended from Cooks like he, Cooks is able to defend guys on the perimeter basically using his size and his length then it's a pretty solid uh, you know play and again Casper Ware, I thought, defended that pretty well. I think Ty Wesley gets that call basically because he's the bigger guy, and that's pretty solid from Kyle Adam there on an inbound play. But again, that downhill screening, it's its something... Look, uh, it's Perth's going to use that. If we play Melbourne, Melbourne's probably going to use that for Trimble and for Chris Golding. We've seen that happen heaps of times there, again, gapping Mitch Creek shooting jumpers. And, you know, against a, a New Zealand Breakers, against an Adelaide maybe, or an Illawarra, you're not really, really worried about that. But these these teams like the Perths, the Melbourne, the Cairns Taipans did a little bit with Machado. Machado's more of a pass-first point guard. There's some more wrinkles in their offense that can, uh, you know, really hurt us. But really, Melbourne and Perth are the guys that are going to use this. Another, again, high screen. Robson getting all the way. Just kind of misses that floater there. But that's pretty well defended at the rim. Here, Perth, again, the same thing. If you look, you watch Bryce Cotton go all the way around the outside, you know, how, how ragged was our defense there? Deshaun Taylor had to pretty much make an angled sort of run trying to refine his man after he went around a few screens. Again, high screen. Deshaun Taylor gets rinsed. This is where if you get a step on DT, you're going to pre pretty much rinse him. Again, we'll see another high screen on the logo. Cotton shooting that three, knocks it down. Perth are going to kind of beat us this way. I heard, I think I said in the other video, I heard people sort of say, Sean Taylor's pretty pretty solid. His defense is really good. He just hedges a little bit too high, a little bit too much. He's, he's very aggressive. And that's okay. If you have an aggressive guy out front, you kind of want your team to fold in. You, you kind of want your team to sort of go, oh, we, we know he's being aggressive. So we're going to sit in, we're going to tuck in. And then another flop from Wagstaff. These JT fouls are racking up, and that's a real problem on the perimeter. He's he's just such a big guy that guys know if you kind of get next to him, get in front of him, you fall over and you're going to get the call basically because JT is such a big unit. Uh, there's ooh, that's a there's an air ball look like from Tariko White. 
mainly back to uh, the this high screen again off a curl. We've switched JT onto Bryce Cotton again. He gets the favorable matchup in DT. DT's like super aggressive, but nobody's really stepping up. And that's that's like this this crazy sort of whirlwind cyclone floater from Bryce Cotton, forcing him into that sort of poor shot. Again, pretty sketchy screening up high. Casper runs just dead straight into the guy's chest. He doesn't really fight around that screen. Pretty good defensive work there from Newley. Oh, was it kick it? Sorry, downhill. Lucas Walker out again up on the perimeter. Little, oof, got, got rinsed a little bit there. It's a pretty pretty solidly defended three, but Bryce Cotton knocking it down. He's, he's pretty solid and knocking down again. Waiting up out high. Here comes a screen from Kay. Lucas Walker did quite well to stay stout and stay defending that, and that's just a crazy pass out to... Uh, out to Damian Martin in the corner. You're probably going to let him shoot threes. But okay, so we're about to finish up. We've got a few, only a few more clips left. You see Bryce Cotton again into that curl action. That was pretty solidly defended. The issues are really over, over hedging up high. Casper again. Here comes the screen, the first screen. Basically out near the half, half court, like a halfway line, basically up near the logo. Sean Bruce is going to have it. Here comes another screen. Switching him on to Casper Ware. And this this was a pretty sort of neatly run, sort of pick and roll style thing. And then it uh, looked like shot clock violation there. So if we can fly through this stuff, I think we can neutralize Bryce Cotton. I, I don't know if we've got a guy quick enough to neutralize Bryce Cotton. A few of these guys, a few of these last clips are the ones where he torched us down the stretch. We'll have a look here. Torches JT sort of shoots that jumper. That might have been a little bit of a foul there. He kind of landed on him, but you know, a good no call to see Bryce Cotton not getting those superstar calls. Again, we have Damian Martin. Yeah, yeah, chuck that, Damian Martin. We love seeing that. That's an air ball. We'll put uh, Damian Martin air ball clips in there every time. Might have just grazed the front rim. Bryce Cotton coming around, double screen there. That was short. This is going to be an issue. They're just going to run relentless. We saw it against Melbourne last year in those finals. Casper Ware basically, you know, spoiler alert, just destroying us on down screens over and over and over again. I really hope we start to see this for our team, start to see this for the Kings. You know, we, we want to see the same sort of action. And that, that to me, is not a three-point foul. You have a look at this. He lands inside the uh, three-point line. And you see Tariko White kick out his legs. So, again, another crazy JT foul. He likes to get up right up into guys. And you see Wagstaff here toss it out to Bryce Cotton. You know, a pretty, pretty sketchy screen there. Quite solid from Newley. But Newell is not really a guy you want. He, he wasn't even contesting that, and he gets a little bit lucky with the uh, the miss and then the putback. Newell, I don't think you really want defending out on the perimeter. It's 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 an issue. We've got JT again out here on Cotton. Cotton with a nice hezzy, and you can see, you could tell JT on that one was just like, I can't really get up into Cotton here. If I touch him at all, he's going to get the foul. Another down screen again. Bryce Cotton knocks it down. These are the, the spots where, you know, you want to see Casper at the end of our games getting some screens like this, getting some downhill action like this. Again, another round the corner, curl, three, bang. So the screening action is a huge issue. It's going to be a big issue we've got to correct down the stretch of this season. The playoffs are very close. I'm not sure we're going to see the big stepping up. And then I'm not sure we're going to see the screening action sort of complete the way we're defending the uh, three ball. It's a kind of a two-edged sword. The, the centers have got to come out, and the guys have got to collapse a little bit more, and the guy on board has got to uh, be we eager to fight around screens, but at the same time, not not get up and hedge too far high up like DT and Casper, where we're doing a little bit too much. So it's kind of like a very sort of try approach that we've got to really sort of manipulate. And I don't think this is going to be a three or four game stint where, oh, we, here comes the finals. We're just going to, you know, sort this out. This is just going to fall into place. We're going to defend the three ball really well. We're going to defend, defend downhill coming off screens really well. Sweet. We always had it in our locker. I've, I've seen a few too many clips here where we're looking at this going, we're not fixing this. We're not fixing this. This is, you know, three quarters into the season now. We're definitely not fixing this. I think the Melbourne Phoenix sort of three screen action. Perth are going to really use that with Kay and Wagstaff. Um, that's where you got to kind of get the ball out of Bryce Cotton's hands. You've got to let Damian Martin shoot in the corner. Damian Martin, I think, is still injured. But yeah, if you play Melbourne, they're going to do that as well. Trimble's going to get those. Goulding's going to get those. Mitch uh, McCarron. I was going to say Mitch Norton then, but Mitch McCarron's going to get those as well. So mainly, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you get a little bit out of it. So, see some things that we've got to watch for in the uh, upcoming end of the season going into the playoffs. We're either going to play Perth, we're going to play Melbourne, 
Cairns Taipans, I think, I feel like collectively we've got a little bit of the wood over the Taipans. We might be able to dispatch of those guys really easy. Well, really easy, but, you know, a, a little bit easier than Perth and Melbourne. And then whoever makes that uh, other spot, it might be... Uh, or oh, is that? That's three. Cairns. Uh, it might be the Breakers. It might be Adelaide. I'm not sure if I'm going to see it. We're going to see Adelaide sort of get all the way up there. Um, but really, mainly Perth and Melbourne is the the main threat on some of this stuff. I don't think the Phoenix are going to get up there. Robertson's another guy who uh, shoots that down screen true ball really well. Uh, yeah, so I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe. And we will see you guys next time on the King's Dime.